Hey everyone, welcome to this demonstration of Unreal Engine 5 and MetaSounds. This isn't going to be a tutorial and this is going to be relatively unstructured. I just wanted to show you a little bit of what I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Then hopefully when Unreal Engine 5 uh, comes out and uh, becomes a lot more developed, we'll be able to uh, demonstrate more of uh, what MetaSounds is going to be about in the future, and then hopefully I can uh, teach you more about its insights uh, once its uh, flaws are worked out and everything is more finalized. So I made a, just a very basic scene in here. There's not a whole lot in here right now. Uh, I have a uh, audio spline, which I'll show you that blueprint in just a moment. I have a little bit of fire, uh, which has some... Uh, 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 attenuation uh, placed on it and I'll obviously show you, show you stuff like that. Uh, I have one of the default uh, Unreal Engine packs. Uh, I believe this is Iggy and Scorch, um, which uh, as I found out when I was making this project, I did not realize that all the characters came with a huge amount of audio options. So this is really exciting. Um, but uh, more towards uh, meta sounds, uh, uh, let's start with the wind, actually. So uh, I'll uh, show you uh, the wind, which is not made by uh, audio waves, but it was made with uh, entirely through Blueprint, which uh, thankfully I got to see how this was generated. And uh, uh, this was mostly done through uh, the noise generator and uh, modulated through LFOs and a couple of bi-quad filters. Um, uh, and this could all be changed uh, in real time using this wind strength float input. Uh, so if I play it right now, it plays a really simple wind that uh, modulates uh, very subtly. Uh, I can move it up and down. And it becomes very intense very quickly. So we're going to bring this back down to 0.8. Um, yeah, feel free to like do a lot of experimentation with your meta sounds. It's just really fun to kind of uh, figure out what uh, each of these notes do. Um, so that's our wind. Uh, it's currently uh, being uh, displayed on our audio spline, um, which I'll just briefly kind of take a show you what the blueprint looks like. The basic idea is that uh, the audio spline is going to literally follow this line, is going to uh, figure out where the character is and adjust itself uh, to the best possible location on the line closest to the player uh, and attenuating itself uh, through this uh, attenuation wind, um, which looks uh, something like this. Um, and just, uh, just uh, to figure out uh, kind of what works best for your wind sounds. I'm still kind of tweaking things, still kind of playing around with it to see how I could like it. Uh, but uh, for those of you who are here with like all my wise tutorials, uh, you may see the inner radius and fallout distance and kind of understand how it relates to, uh, to wise's attenuation settings where 2600, that's as far as the wind sound is going to play. Whereas uh, once you get into the 400 float range, that is when it is going to be at its maximum volume. Uh, so that's uh, something that you can check out when you head into Unreal Engine 5. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do is talk about some music. Uh, so in the start of the game, which I will demonstrate uh, once I've kind of talked about all of this, uh, we are loading in our, uh, what I'm calling MS Adaptive Music, MS uh, referring to meta sound so i'm gonna get in there um so when we first start uh with meta sounds uh which you can uh, look up uh, several tutorials uh for uh meta sounds for how new it is it's actually really incredible how much uh people have delved into this it's really exciting but uh basically on play we are uh uh, basically initializing uh, everything to get started. Uh, the first thing that I made was basically this lead. Uh, and it does a couple of things. This first thing uh, was something I tested out but haven't been able to fully implement into the full, uh, full uh, music. But I can at least demonstrate with the lead right now so what i'm going to do 
is I'm going to shut off my chords for a second and kind of demonstrate what the lead sounds like right now. Um, and what I was talking about earlier uh, was uh, this little tester thing right here. It uh, is actually going to change my scale. So right now you're hearing a harmonic minor scale. So uh, pretty dark, pretty mysterious. Um, but if I trigger this on major, then it's going to sound a lot happier. Oh, well, isn't that pretty, right? So we're going to switch it back to on minor because I have not fully implemented this into the chords. And uh, I'm not going to go into polyphony right now, so we're just going to stick with a harmonic minor structure. So now we are going to just uh, do our chords really quick. So let's plug those in. All right, let's hear how that sounds. Oh, that's, that's right, I put in a delay. So uh, the very beginning it does not play any chords at all. So it's gonna go four bars of uh, just doing nothing. And I'll show you how I, uh, how I did that in a second, but uh, we'll get chords in just one moment. There they are. And how I ended up inevitably doing that. So it is a four note chord being balanced together into this one mono mixer. And it will always play a uh, one, six, two, five sequence. Um, and the way that I uh, approached that is by literally making a float array for this chord progression. And uh, zero is the one chord, eight is the uh, six chord two is the uh, two chord, and then seven is the five chord. Um, and then we basically just loop through this index, ignoring the zero, um, over and over again, constantly getting one, six, two, and then five. And basically what we have here is that uh, we have our base note, so basically the root note, no matter what, and then a fifth above that, and then we have a sixth uh, yeah, six above that. So now we have a, a minor chord where basically the third is just thrown on top. And then we have a uh, sixth above that. So this ends up being the root note as well. So we're in C minor. This is going to be C, G, E flat, and C uh, uh, in the end. So uh, let's hear how all that sounds together with the lead and the chords. And uh should be sound pretty cool. All right, that sounds pretty sweet. So all of, yeah, all of the notes uh, in the lead are randomized, but everything uh, in the chord is exactly planned and laid out. Um, and with how MetaSounds currently works, if I play this, it's just going to play forever and ever um, until I do something about it. Uh, what I did was a little bit uh, strange. It's probably... Basically, I do a fade out uh, on stopping, and while you probably shouldn't put the fade out into the meta sound directly, you probably should do the fade out outside in blueprints. I just wanted to try this out, see if it works, and it does, and it actually works kind of decently. Uh, so I uh, have all of this being triggered on an on stop trigger. Uh, so basically, if I ever needed to stop the music and I wanted this fade out to happen then all I need to do is uh, uh, trigger this on stop, which I'll show you how uh, we're doing that in Blueprint in just one moment. But uh, let me just show you how that sounds like right now. So we're playing. We're going to wait until the chords come in for a second, which as I told you, uh, it's just going to be four bars of uh, these uh, uh, leads before the chords come in. So here, let me uh, trigger the on stop just by hitting this down arrow. And then I'm sending it out for a nice four second fade out time. All right, so that's our adaptive music. Let's move on from that. Let's check out uh, the second piece of music, which we'll be transitioning uh, to via the 
music manager blueprint, which I'll show you in just one moment. Uh, so this one, I took a different approach. Um, uh, basically, instead of just initializing everything all at once, all of this is going to be triggering everything um, beat by beat. So this one is literally going to be triggering our eighth notes, and this one is going to be triggering all of our quarter notes, and this one's going to be triggering all of our 16th notes, and then this one's going to trigger all of our whole notes. So, uh, and that's and those triggers are going to be sent all the way over here. So this one is going to be triggered as an eighth notes. So all my hi-hats are going to be eighth notes. And then my snare drums are going to also be eighth notes. And then my bass hits are going to be quarter notes. And we have our main melody, um, uh, which I have as whole notes. I think I ended up making those uh, more chordal, but uh, it's, uh, and then we have our official chords as well. So uh, we are going, I'm going to show you how all of that sounds. Um, this one's like a, like a lot more uh, uh, complicated uh, chordal system because it ends up being six notes, um, which can get a little bit messy, but uh, let's hear how that sounds. And just with, uh, uh, with this, uh, we also have an on stop very important that this input is the exact same uh, as the one uh, we had in our adaptive music. So on stop, we're going to trigger it. And just like before, it takes four seconds to fade out to nothing before finishing completely. All right, now let's uh, move on to the last section. We're going to go to our blueprint uh, music manager. This one's very simple. I didn't do anything terribly complex. I can upgrade this to something a little more complicated. But as of right now, uh, all I'm doing is I'm binding an event to change music as an event dispatcher. Um, you could do this as uh, just has have this as a regular event and it would work just fine. But just in case you want to do more functions uh, attached to this change music um, uh, uh, delegate, then uh, this just gives you the option to do so in the future. But uh, for now, basically, it, when you begin the play, it's just going to fade in uh, our current sound, which, as of right now, is going to be our adaptive music, the first uh, uh, piece of music you just heard. Um, then uh, we're going to have an ability to transition the music. So in our uh, level, we have what I deem very fancifully the danger zone. So if we enter into the danger zone, uh, we are going to... Uh, uh, first off, we're going to check to see if we're the player, and then we are going to change our music, um, which we're going to change it to our M MS Modular Synth, which uh, we uh, that was the second piece that you played. And then when you exit the danger zone, we're going to go straight on back to the adaptive music. So when you change the music, uh, you are going to uh, fade out which uh, we're going to do two things. Number one, we are going to take our fade out time float, which both of our songs have a fade out time. Uh, and we're going to set that to four or rather our transition length with that, which that transition length is going to be important in a moment. And then uh, as you saw with uh, both of our uh, pieces of music, we have our on stop trigger. So we're going to do that uh, by getting the parameter in interface of our audio component and then fading out stopping and then we're moving on to uh, make sure the, uh, to set that we are transitioning that will come uh, into play in a second and then we're going to delay for our four second transition length before setting our brand new music which this is fairly simple uh, we're going to stop the audio component to make sure that after we fade out everything's done playing and then we're going to set our new sound which as we saw before is going to be our uh, 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 our MS modular synthesis for when we enter into our uh, death zone um, or danger zone rather. Uh, and then we're going to fade right back in um, and continue playing our music. So uh, what happens when we uh, uh, set our transitioning? Well, uh, that will allow us to uh, uh, activate this event tick, which is going to constantly uh, uh, add to our current transition time. Um, and the reason we only do this is because um, if we are in the middle of transitioning and then we happen to exit the uh, the danger zone, we don't want um, we don't want to transition immediately. 
uh, uh, there, there can be a little bit more complexity to this. Uh, this is just the simplest way I, I can kind of make this to work. But uh, as long as, uh, so once current transition time uh, is greater than or equal to our transition length, so basically once we've waited four seconds, then we are going to uh, set transitioning to false. And then we're also going to, of course, make sure that current transition time is also back to zero. Um, and that's what's kind of going on right here. If we happen to not be, uh, if, uh, if we are in the middle of transitioning and we still have some uh, current transition time left, then we're going to want to make sure that four minus, let's say, uh, uh, current transition time is three seconds. So we're going to delay by one more second before fading out our current music again. So uh, that's all that uh, basically is. So let's uh, see how this map sounds. So we're hearing our uh, adaptive music right away, and uh, we'll walk forward and we'll start hearing our wind. Yeah, and that's right on our audio spline, which is kind of going uh, horizontally right over here. And then we can hear a little bit of our fire. Yep, all right, perfect. And then we're going to listen to Iggy. Awesome, very good. Um, there, yeah, there was a whole blueprint I set up for him, not that big, uh, big of a deal. Um, also, uh, he's being uh, currently uh, ducked, or rather the music is being ducked whenever uh, he starts speaking, so that way his uh, uh, voice does not get obscured, um, which uh, just works uh, through the uh, submixes. Uh, and then we're going to enter the danger zone. We're gonna hear our four second fade out, and then we're gonna hear our modular synthesis. Very nice. All right, and then we're going to exit the danger zone, and things are going to get a lot calmer. Four more seconds to fade out, and then finally we're going to hear our adaptive music again. All right, so that was my basic demonstration of uh, of meta sounds. I don't want to do any major tutorials uh, because one, there are several out there, and uh, there's not a whole lot new I can say about it as of right now. But also because I would like to wait until Unreal Engine Five has been fully released, and we have. A little more documentation on uh, uh, what meta sounds could be, uh, and then I would be able to uh, talk a little more in depth of how that would work. But uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully I'll have a new tutorial out for you guys sometime soon.